Hi, it's Hunter the Honda Mackinen, and welcome to the audio commentary for Love Him or Leave Him. Hello, this everybody. is our, uh, welcome back to the teaser cartoon we did with Ken, Aqualung, Blakey, uh, and, uh, Really, just to, to to continue the tradition of Robot Master cartoons we've done before as teasers for his reviews. Um, what's funny about this cartoon is when we started working on it, Ken was very adamant that we not make it about Splash Woman because or every or the other Robot Masters falling in love with Splash Woman because that seemed like such an awesome, uh, obvious idea. But after we ha but once we had the brainstorming session, I think Ken had come around and realized, you know, it's. Uh, it's an yeah, uh, easy. Guess, it was an easy way to go for this cartoon. I, well, really, more so, I think uh, Ken wanted to kind of reprise the role of the <laughs> of the rude game show host from the uh, Aqualung game, uh, the game show cartoon, which we did for Mega Man Seven. And with the brainstorming session, we kind of nailed down on all the basic ideas behind this cartoon. Here's my personal favorite character that I did for, uh, was Hornet Man. We decided early on Hornet Man was going to be a creepy Mexican. <laughs> so I, d I guess I did this voice and Ken thought it was really funny and we incorporated it into the cartoon. Sarah was really good um, as Splash Woman. I have to say I wasn't actually wild about her voice when I first started, but then once I did the animation and I realized, I, I realized you know, it worked really well. I guess I guess I have the same reaction whenever Ken does his parts, and this is actually wow. the most characters he's done in any of our cartoons so far. And uh, he did a, and he did a good job too. And it's funny because you know even with Ken, uh, whenever I do his parts in the script, um, they never turn out quite the way I expect them. But you know it's never a bad thing. You know it's a little bit of creative freedom. Yeah, it goes a long way. And this was Ken's second character, Concrete Man. I hope people realize the joke there was that uh, I've done a cartoon with Splash Woman before, but she didn't have any dialogue. I mean, the hardest part about doing any cartoon is if you have uh, female characters in it. There's nothing more harder to find than a willing uh, female voice actress. Uh, and Sarah, you know, Sarah worked really well for this cartoon. And uh, but uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I've done a cartoon with Splash Woman before uh, where she didn't have any dialogue and she had feet. So I got rid of that problem of getting her, of getting her around with the fishtail, and I wanted to do more bits with the fishtail, but it didn't. It never materialized. This was entirely, well, almost entirely ad libbed. I I just kind of had to plant the in Sarah's dialogue basically. This was the most extensive I think dialogue part for Sarah was that little bit before Tornado Man completely blows his chances. I think this was another one that we discussed. It's been voiced by other people who expected Jewel Man to be yeah, a bit more, how would I put it, fabulous. <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 we, did, we, did, we decided not to go with too many characters with a lisp. I just did, this is my dramatic voice, I guess, I call it. This is when I want to sound really dramatic, overtly dramatic, really. This is the voice I always do. And so it worked great for Jewel Man. It's quite a bit leaner here than I expected, but I had to write, or I had to draw all the characters from model, basically, because none of these characters I've drawn in, like, real life before. And here's the second voice. Ken absolutely wanted to do Galaxy Man, and he wanted to do it because of the this voice effect, and it worked really great. I think the hardest part about making these, was making these <laughs> Robot Masters distinct. Also, this is probably my favorite set. This is my favorite set setting for a cartoon because I'm such a sci-fi geek. Of course, I had to have a TIE fighter and the Enterprise flying in the background. I was going to have the Death Star here, too, but it was too hard to animate, so I just left it out. And finally, a classic cartoon bit. I wonder, I, I, I wonder why I haven't done somebody turning green before, but I love that. I love that. I just love the cheesy little bits like that. I had to put those things in the background, obviously, because Galaxy Man doesn't have a lot of expressions. So, uh... Magma Man, we didn't have a voice for Magma Man when we started. I didn't want to do my deep voice for him, but I did a take with the deep voice, I think. Uh, just so Ken would have something to choose from. Ken approved a lot of the voices for this one because I had so many ideas for voices, but I didn't know which ones would fit the best. And I think he went and we went for our, our, 
our uh, our common love for the Scot Scottish accent, I just we decided to go with this one. Oh, this bit Ken actually thought of this bit uh, when we did the brainstorming session. And Wiley, again, Ken always wants to put Wiley in the cartoon. I I always try. I, I don't think about Wiley enough, I guess, in my cartoons writing, which is why he always tells me, please put Wiley in. But anyway, uh, oh, this is a familiar voice. I dare anyone to recognize it. But anyway, uh, we had the bit with the waiter, and I hadn't recorded the, all the dialogue for the waiter. I'd forgotten one line, and so I had to go and re-record it. And that's when Ken told me, it would be nice if you could put, like, put Wiley in as a cameo, and then all of a sudden, ah, hell, we'll just have him be the second waiter. The first waiter's supposed to be Zero. I'm not sure if anybody notices. I'm out of here. Plugman was it was such an obvious joke to go with, so it was I real I was I had to restrain myself a little bit on all the all the insane stuff that he could have said. Uh, yes, Aqualung's character is actually called Host this time and not Aqualung. I guess it, I don't know why I, I just decided that it, it just kind of sounds kind of awkward. But it, technically, you get the same vibe as with the game show host from the other cartoon. And Mega Man coming back from his appearance in the Mega Man 7 cartoon, actually. We use mainly music from Mega Man 9 in this one. Oh, and Shiva. I, I threw that in. That was my idea. <laughs> Most of the music is from Mega Man 9, but there is one piece of music from Mega Man 1. I dare anyone to find it, though, because the music doesn't play very uh, loudly here. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the cartoon, and I'm Hunter the Hunter Mechanin, and see you on the next one.